What's common between a 10-year-old government and a 14-year-old business news channel? Both get toppled by the people's favorite. CNBC TV 18, around for 14 years, has been voted out. ET Now, India's number one business news channel. In what could be called as the tectonic shift, first time post-independence, India's right has become centre. Narendra Modi is the new CEO on the saddle. So what could the Modi regime change for India, Indians and Indian markets to understand that and to dissect that? I have a very special guest, someone whom I've always maintained is the ultimate authority on Indian stock markets, Rakesh Junjunwala. And it is very exciting when Rakesh Junjunwala is of the view that a new bull market has started. Mr. Junjunwala, uh, I'm really thankful to you that you could join us. Thank you for having me. Uh, landslide, avalanche, hurricane. I have to stretch my vocabulary to really tsunami, capture tsunami. the tsunami. That's another one. Tsunami. To really capture the Modi victory. How should one read into it? I think there are two, three aspects to it. The first and most important aspect is that today we are voting beyond religion and caste. And we are voting for we, India has a lot of people have a lot of aspirations. People have voted for development and growth. Mr. Modi's campaign was development and growth. It's a welcome change. And also it's an indicator that you know people could go through the shackles of caste and creed and religion. Which shows that Indian democracy is maturing. The poor, ill, so-called illiterate Poverty-ridden Indian is also voting not on the basis of his caste and creed, or getting you know buckled down by some uh, some kind of threats. But people are voting for growth. I think which is and people are voting rightly in my opinion. That's my opinion. I think the the maturing of Indian democracy is I think an extremely extremely long-term positive factor. Second, also I would I would like to add uh, Nikunj. That see in the last two three years when the government got paralyzed, the various institutions of or organs of democracy, the CAG, the Reserve Bank, the Army, everything worked perfectly, and the civil uh, movements. So you know, we I can say that we now have a deeply entrenched, uh, deeply entrenched mature democracy, and I believe that the countries who have achieved growth and sustained it for long periods of time are all democratic. Okay. You know, it's Apki Bar Modi Sarkar. It is not Apki Bar BJP Ki Sarkar. Do you like the style of uh, Narendra Modi? Do you think he could be a good manager? Because uh, he's been a CM. The migration from CM to PM really could be tricky. And I think as far as managerial skills are concerned, I think there is no doubt. I mean, it is proved in Gujarat, And it is so much proved in this campaign. And what kind of energy to travel 3 lakh 50,000 kilometers? I mean, his voice went hoarse in the end, despite all the hot water he drinks, I'm told. And he's a, I mean, my impression of, after having met him is that he's a very humble man. He's a very good listener. He has a lot of wisdom. He would like to know what others think and then decide. So a dictator is one who just decides on his own. Hmm. What is one, what is one big area where, or what is one thing he needs to do quickly so that markets get a sense that uh, he means business. Well, markets, I don't know because they are, uh, they are, you know, odd creatures. But I think he needs to, he knows what to do. I think the last thing we should do is advise him. Right, see this journey to seven race course was, has started seven, eight years ago. It's seven, eight years, that's what I feel, not that anybody told me. It was a long planning. So there is some planning of what he knows the problems. He has been ruling Gujarat for 12 years. Truism in the market is that good news and good prices, they rarely come together. Right now, the news is good, but are prices good? Well, good is an adjective. It, prices will mean different things to different people. I can tell you in general that I don't think market has picked out. There's a lot of way to go, both in the short term and the long term. I don't know about the medium term. Fair point. So, short term, why are you bullish? Because we've seen a run-up. Yeah, we, I'm bullish because I think nobody's committed. Right? Mm -hmm. And you'll never forget the words of Harshad Nara. 
He said, what is the difference between commodities and stocks? When commodities go up, demand goes down. When stocks go up, demand goes up. I just, I'm going to take one more minute and try and understand your definition of a bull market because the classic definition of a bull market is that uh, index normally goes six times from the previous bottom. So the previous bottom for the Sensex was 8,500. So do you think by the time this bull, new bull market which has started, by the time it will finish, Sensex could be at about 45 to 50,000? You are being very bearish. I'm being mean bearish. Both price wise and value wise. Okay. And the value of the index to project would be both time wise and price wise, okay. right? So I think this is a bull market which will continue for long periods. Okay. You know, we could have a market like America when you had a bull market from '85 to 2007, 2009. Sorry, 2007 it peaked. A 22 year bull market. It peaked in '99, 14 years, and then again it did not lose those values, it regained them. So I feel we'll have a bull market which would last for 15 to 20 years. So market capitalization is about a trillion dollars. Do you think it could be three trillion dollars? Or more than three trillion dollars, that's about three times. Well, let me not try and predict the... See, a tip, what is a bull market? In a bull market, P is must have. Okay. Right, and when EPS is expand fast, P is expand. Bull market means the valuations go up. Valuations go up when the, when the earnings go up. Valuations go up doesn't mean really it's gone up. You're only compensating for earnings growth. Yeah, right? But when the P's go up, you have a true bull market. So I see and I think India, I mean, I'm of that opinion and I deserve the right to be wrong. And I have been right and wrong earlier. I feel India's economic growth will out surprise people, even at the cost of reputation. And, and seeing the underexposure to equity, the tax benefits for investment, the fact that I envisage lower interest rates for long, long periods of time to come, so I see no reason why, you know, we could not have, we could have a, I mean, a market could double and then correct 20% or then again go up, may not go up for, it may go up for three years, may not go up for one year, who knows all that. Mm. It may go up for one year, then correct for six months. But overall, the bull market is intact whenever the previous top bottom is predicted. I mean, today also, I will not say that technically there's a confirmation of the bull market. When the index has gone above 6,400, today it says around 73, we don't know, it may have peaked, it may go to 7,800, it may go to 8,000. Then when it corrects, it should not fall below 6,300. And then when it corrects, suppose it comes to 7,000. In the next fall, it should not break 7,000. Mm -hmm. And the next rise should be, suppose it corrects from 7,900. And then it corrects to 7,000. Again, it must take out 7,900. Say it's 8,100. And then when it corrects, it should not come below 7,200 or 7,000. That would be the real test of the bull market. Bull market. Mm. Do you think this will be a very broad-based bull market? Has to be. If it's going to be such a long bull market. And I think it will be, I am also hopeful. See, according to me, excesses take place in bull markets. Because bull markets overwhelm greed. You know, greed overwhelms people in bull markets. I think this time it will be also be a far cleaner bull market. Because all this rigging of shares and everything now is effectively going to be 2 to 5% of what it used to be. That model where you rig shares and you get bank loans and you know, use that for buying shares and all kind of rigmarole. I think that has died a death. It may spring back a little, but... You're sounding, me like, you're sounding to me like Rake Junjunwala of 2003. You were convinced that we, on, we were on the verge of a new economic cycle. What you did in 2003 was apart from... Uh, you know, taking delivery positions, you also took leverage positions. Are you that bullish? Are you ready to take a deep dive with leverage leveraged. positions? I am leveraged. So you are approaching this market? No, no, the leverage doesn't mean that I'm as bullish as 2003. I don't know I'm bullish. I can't measure my levels of bullishness. I am bullish and I am leveraged. Uh, what about the polarized nature of the market? Do you think it will change? Because for the longest time, when it's the longest it's time... It's a relay race. Years, it's a relay race. Everybody will participate. We've seen a huge mean reversion in industrials. Uh, mid caps are up 40 to 50 percent from the recent lows. Do you think now mid cap stocks could take a pause and markets would wait for some more evidence before earnings would come in? See, there are two reasons, two kinds of mid caps. One are companies who are over leveraged and whose debt is overwhelming and who have a lot of problems, right? See, those companies around to will take time. And after a run up, they will either pause or they will correct substantially. The other kind of companies who are, you know, substantially undervalued. They had good earnings, good growth, but they were undervalued. Those kind of companies will keep going up or their corrections will be very poor. So I can't talk of mid-caps in one breath. 
Uh, what happens to IT? Because if you are of the view that uh, flows would increase, FDI investments would increase, inflation will come down, that's great news if you are importing, but that's terrible news if you are exporting. Why you revise terrible news? Rupee exporting? would appreciate or rupee could appreciate. I mean, rupee, I mean, I don't think rupee will appreciate. I think it may appreciate temporarily, but you are not allowing gold imports. Imports are curved because economic growth is not there. If the rupee goes down, some, uh, some part of the exports will be affected. So I don't think we're in a position to, you know, the real effective rate people are predicting between 60 and 62. I think which is the rate at which we should, you know, rate at which the rupee should be according to me. Mm. Also, see, software is the leader in India. That leadership, I think, is not going to go away in a hurry. Both software and pharma, all right? The second thing also is, it is never that, you know, you are in true bull market and the leader's piece will not expand. In the real areas, maybe now at the moment, it may be the turn of the industrials or the cyclicals. But then after some time, turn of, of the software and pharma will come again. They'll be around too. So logically speaking, this is a good time to buy into IT because IT has corrected. Well, that I don't know, but I don't, I, I'm personally bullish on IT. If I just look at your basic investment approach, you always have short-term bets, medium-term bets and long-term bets. Right. Uh, off late, you've been shopping a lot. And this is pure public data. You've bought into First Source, you've bought into Devan Housing Finance, you've bought into Prakash Industries, a cement company on Thursday. Uh, so the recent investments which you've made, are they part of a medium-term portfolio or are they part of a long-term portfolio? Well, whatever I invest is medium to long-term. See, whatever I do less than for a year is all trading. Okay. I do three activities. One is I trade the futures, which is, say, from one week to two, three months. Okay. Then I take delivery of shares, which are trades, which I you know hold for anything from 3 to 12 months, with 3 to 10, 11 months. And then I invest for the long term. So if the shares and the name of Rakesh or Rikha Junwala, it's always an investment. So the, you know, the, the time horizon could be from 1 to 15 years. I will invest in 15, 15 years, right? If it's for less than a, it's a name of rare enterprise, means it's a trade. That's a way to look at it. That's a way to look at it. Hmm. Uh, I wonder why have you bought into some of the mid-cap stocks where balance sheet issues are still not over, maybe something like a Prakash Industries. The FCCB problem is still there. No, but they will be able to pay the FCCB. What is the problem? You think that's not a problem? No, why they have declared a dividend. Their debt equity ratio is not high at all. They, I mean, they have an interest cover of it is four times. So I think it's a safe company. It's not a company which can be overwhelmed by debt. It has no debt problems. Mm -hmm. It may have some liquidity problem that you have to make a one-shot payment, but some bank will give it to them. The iron ore mine issue is still hanging. Yeah, but why should they not get the mine? They have not done anything wrong. And it's, it's given by the state government. I was deeply looking at Q4 numbers of Titan, and the numbers were solid. Margin expansion was decent. Uh, the watch business seems to be migrating back. Uh, are you pleasantly surprised with what Titan has achieved in a very tough quarter? It's a tough quarter for the retail industry. Well, I think Titan has performed exceedingly well in the circumstances. And I also think Titan has made the custom kind of bottom. I personally feel Titan will not break 270, 275. Right? That's how I look at it. I first look at the bottom. And I think Titan will grow at 15, 20% a year and give that kind of return, which is very good. Are you happy with the diversification of what they are doing purely as an investor? I mean, they moved into eyewear, they are moving into perfumes. Why should they not? That's a high margin business. They have, they have to expand both vertically and horizontally. And I think the perfumes are very good. They are selling very well, I am told. So they should go into new areas. After all, they are lifestyle retailers. I think they will go into newer areas also. Lupin operate, uh, reported the margins of 28% for the quarter gone by, one of the highest they have reported in an industry. You know, it appeared a year ago that Lupin was getting to that mature curve, but uh, they are surprising again and again. And they will surprise again and again, don't worry. Why do you say that? So I think, you know, I, I went to the analyst meet, and in my opinion, the presentation they made that time was one of the best presentation I have seen. And they are now, you know, diversifying into very challenging areas, they're doing it in a very measured and proper manner. And if they succeed, in fact, they're going into the inhalation business. You know, GSK has got a $9 billion product in the US market, which is off patent, but there is no manufacturer. And they are trying to challenge that. And I don't know definitely, but that's what I feel. So, you know, they are making the right investment, right attitude. 
taking the right risks. There's growth in the business in Africa, South Africa, in India, in, in America. They're not trying to enter Europe in a big way, enter Latin America. So I, for one, feel quite satisfied. And I think it's my hope, feeling that Lupin will surprise on the upside. You've been an early entrant in Orvindo Pharma. You spotted the turnaround much ahead than anybody else was able to spot. Do you think bulk of the re-rating in Orvindo Pharma is over? The FDA problems are over, margins have expanded, the stock has gone from 150 to about 500. See, I will say one thing. I don't think that a company like Orvindo can have a P of less than 50. 15? Why not? He will now be the fourth largest or fifth largest in the industry. It's just that when you add up numbers, you realize how, yeah, big, it how, has big, how big it has yeah, become. Yeah, quite true. And I'm told he's got some very, very good products coming up. Not that I know of. So I think anything above 15 P is a fair valuation. Right? I think there is time to go still. And I think if it consistently performs well over the next two years, then P will further go up. You told me last time that you like the agri space. And that's the reason why you invested into Rallis and uh, Escorts. Rallis numbers were good. But Escorts is losing market share. Uh, their margins are not the no, best in the they are not industry. losing market share. I don't know. I have not studied this aspect. So I don't want to comment on that. But you happy to own escorts? Absolutely. Do you like the tractor business or you like the other businesses of escorts? Because we always think escorts is a tractor company, but they've got two other... No, I think the, what I like is both the railway and the tractor business. And what I like is they have a lot of unutilized capacity. They have a debt uh, equity ratio, which is very comfortable. They have interest coverage, which is very good. And they don't have to invest anything to enhance capacity. Right? So when, we, when you have, use that capacity, the margins really go, uh, go through the roof. Second thing, also I think there's a sea change in the attitude of the management, which I like. Right? It may take time, but I'm hopeful it will do well. As a minority shareholder, or not a minority shareholder, but as a, as a major shareholder in Delta, are you happy with their expansion in Goa? It it's it's looks like a big capex commitment. It's already fulfilled, everything has been done. But moving into hotels could have an impact on the business trajectory. No, no, you bought no, the no, business no. for the casino company, because it was a casino company. No, no, but because we need, we need to have permanent rooms for our guests, for the casino guests, that's why we moved in. And it's not a very big investment, invested 70, 80 crores, I think, if I'm not wrong. Hmm. But you think they're doing the right things? Yeah, no, the one is, uh, not the hotel they're opening, I think. Divan Housing Finance is up, I was just looking at the data in the morning, it's up more than 100% from your investment value. Uh, the P multiple or the price to book for Divan Housing Finance has gone from about half a time to about one time book. Do you think the price to book for Divan Housing could expand further? Because, you know, they are well, I would like to say about, about uh, what will happen with Divan Housing, I can tell you. I think Guru Finance is above four, is around four times book. Much more actually. Much I more. don't know. Uh, and uh, Repco is three, three and a half times. DHFL is one time. It has the highest, the lowest non-provided NPS. The, it is growing with industry standard of 18-20%. So you can c c take your own conclusions. Many uh, experts... And first also, it has a big expertise in disbursement of loans below 15 lakhs. He's an industry leader and also he's the second largest player in the, pri in the housing industry, in the private sector for housing loans after HDFC. Okay, fair point. Uh, Many experts suddenly are of the view that, look, revisit PSU stocks. If the government starts doing a lot of good work, PSUs as a group could make a comeback. Do you buy into that argument? Well, you could do well, but it's going to take a lot of time. See, I tend to distrust the PSUs because there is no continuity. And beyond a valuation, you need leadership. It may come with Mr. Modi eh, making it non-political and having minimum terms. But when a large organization having thousands of crores of business as a chairman who's from 12 months, 15 months, 2 years, what is the mark he can do? And I think the worst corporate governance in this country is from the government. So PSUs as a group, they still remain as a trading bet for you? I would. You would say that? Right? I would say I'm, I'm not investing in public sector stuff. And I'm very of investing in public sector banks also. But you like to trade and trade in them, that's about it. Trading, we're doing everything and anything. Yeah. Hmm. So three years from now, let's say, if we are interacting on the same forum, what kind of market do you think we could be staring at? What kind of economy do you think we could be staring at? We could be staring at economy growing at 8 now percent. We could be looking at a market which could have gone up, say, 75 to 80 percent from present levels. What about global factors? Ruchi Sharma made an argument saying that, look, in Indian, there's nothing special about India. Historically, we've always mapped emerging markets. Well, market that's not growth. an Indian's view. That's an American's view. I think there is something very much special about India. 
India differs from a lot of countries. Right, there is no difference from the, what is Brazil's growth rate? Is India exporting minerals? Brazil's economy is entirely based on exports. And it's agriculture, agri and uh, driven economy. How can you compare India with Brazil or with Indonesia or with any other country? India is India boss. That's an American view, let me tell you again. It's not an Indian's view. So India can be the outlier? It can be, absolutely. It is going to be. Not it can be, it can be and it is going to be in my opinion. Rakit Junjunwala has become a doctor now. So do you like that title, Dr. Rakit Junjunwala? What difference is he going to make to me? I don't have to, I am Sher Bazaar Rukchap. <laughs> I don't have to project a personality. That personality is never going to change. Mr. Junwala, you are fully invested. You have said that the best way to make money in bull market is to really ride the tide. So you will have a lot of free time now. So what are you planning, planning to do with your free no, time? No, no, I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> I am working harder than ever. Because I trade, trading requires me to be on front of the front of the screen and a lot of people tell me why you trade. I said because that's the mother of all my wealth. If I not trade, I never made money, you never made money, I would never have invested. And because I find it, it's exciting. You know, I want to quote Warren Buffett, that whatever wealth I have, what is allowed me to do? Do what I like. I do what I like. Really appreciate your time, sir, and so glad you could accommodate this interview request. Wish you all the best for the year and take care of your health. Thank you.